This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, hello there, hello there. It's Jeff Cutter Dabby welcoming you to another sports catastrophe for Empty Floyd. There is no on this day for today, April 16th. It's just the Empty Floyd. And the Empty Floyd for today is a legendary head coach. Obviously, you can tell by the hoodie of evil, as I call it. But this guy is now 70 years old. Only 70. I thought he would be like 75, with the way he was. But anyway, he was head coach of the New England Patriots. And kind of the GM as well. He holds many coaching records, winning six Super Bowls as head coach of the Pats and two as defensive coordinator for the New York Giants. He is Bill Belichick. So Belichick has the longest active tenured head coach. First in playoff coach play, wins in the playoffs with 31 and in regular season coaching records, he's 290. He's behind only Shula and Hallis. Bill Belichick was born in Nashville, Tennessee. And his father was an assistant at the U.S. Navy Academy. Belichick would study football with him. All that. He would put... He would play lacrosse at Wesleyan University in Middle uh, Connecticut. So after graduating, Belichick took a $25 a week job as an assistant to Ted Marcia Broda for the Baltimore Colts in 1975. I believe that team actually came out of nowhere in the 75 Colts to win the division and have a playoff game, which they got crushed by Pittsburgh. He became the Lions' assistant special teams coach before before adding the tight ends and wide receivers to his coach duties in 1977. He was released in 1978 and spent the, that season with the Denver Broncos as the assistant special teams coach and defensive assistant. His, his mentorship actually worked out because the Giants picked him up. And the Giants, with Ray Perkins as head coach, decided to say that he would be a defensive assistant and special teams coach. And then by 1980, he was the linebacker's coach. And in 1985, the Giants decided to give Belichick the keys to the defense as a defensive coordinator under Bill Parcells. It worked out. The Giants would win two Super Bowls by focusing in on the quarterbacks and all that. In 1987, when the Giants beat the Broncos, the Giants could hone on, on John Elway and make him do terrible things with the ball. And in 1991, when they won the Super Bowl against the Bills, Belichick was credited with slowing down the Bills' no-huddle offense by basically just ball control. It was always the ball control, and that's what why things happened. The Bills couldn't score when they couldn't get down the field. Anyway, so the Giants side. So yeah, he was. It was the defensive game plan. In fact, that defensive game plan is in the Hall of Fame. Like literally, it's like funny, you know, the whole thing. Anyway, after the Giants sucked the next season, Belichick found himself, well, no, sorry, Belichick then was given a chance to coach, be the head coach, and Cleveland picked him up. He was only 36 and 44 with the Browns, not really good. Got him to one playoff spot in 94, but they got taken out, no, sorry, who did, who did Cleveland get taken out by? can't remember. Regardless. Okay, well, it doesn't matter, but the as the Browns head coach, his one playoff victory was against the New England Patriots, who were coached by Bill Parcells, ironic enough, in the wild card round. Unfortunately, the Browns would falter. One of Belichick's biggest mistakes was cutting Bernie Kosar midway through the 93 season, saying declining stuff. He had declining talent. And he was writing Finney Testaferdi. Why would you write Finney Testaferdi? I mean, he only had a few good seasons. He was just a journeyman. Regardless, Cleveland made the class. At least he saved his butt from that. But the worst part is that Kosar actually signed with Dallas and became their backup and would actually help him in, I think, the NFC title game? I can't remember. He was huge in one game. Anyway, Kosar was the backup for Dallas when they won Super Bowl 28. And, you know, 
Costa Rica got a Super Bowl, right? So in 1995, of course, in his final year as Cleveland head coach, that was the year that Cleveland was going to move to Baltimore. Modell well, say he had no choice, but I think he had some choice. A lot of people blame Modell, they even blame Pers uh, I mean Belichick for why Cleveland moved to Baltimore. But the fact of the matter is that Cleveland Stadium was a mess. They couldn't get a football-only stadium. They, could, they couldn't really get renovations because downtown Cleveland had the Gateway Project. They had a new baseball stadium for Cleveland, Jacobs Field, which took away from Cleveland's, the Cleveland Browns' revenue stream. New basketball arena, Dunn Arena. They even did a science museum and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And yet, Art Modell couldn't get money for the Browns. Weird. Anyway, Belichick was told that when Cleveland moved to Baltimore, he would be the head coach. But unfortunately, a week later, he got canned. He would serve for the Patriots as assistant head coach and defenses back in 96. I can't believe it. I thought after Cleveland, it took a while for him to get on his feet. But I didn't know he, co he was coach. He was assistant head coach of the Pats in 96. Anyway, the Pats, that was the year the Pats won the AFC title game against Jacksonville. and went to Super Bowl and got crushed by Green Bay thanks to Desmond Howard's run. Pers the problem was that Parcells was going to defect to another team. And that ruined the Super Bowl plan for the Pats. Anyway, Belichick actually had two stints as head coach of the Jets without coaching the game. Anyway, Belichick was named the Jets' interim head coach when the Jets and Pats had to have nego a compensation negotiation to release Parcell from his contract with the Pats and allow Parcell to coach the Jets. So he, for six days, actually ended up being the head coach. Which was funny. Bel the Jets needed Belichick. And, you know, after the Jets finally got the agreement to get Parcells over to New York, Belichick became the team's assistant head coach and defensive coordinator. Anyway, after Parcells stepped down in 99, he said Belichick will be the new head coach. It was great. Anyway, Belichick was introduced as head coach. He actually made it a resignation assignment announcement. He scrolled a resignation note on the rack in the red. I was signed as HC of the New York of the NYJ. So basically, he would give a 30 minute speech about his resignation. It was bizarre. And even worse was that the Patriots made him their 12th coach, succeeding Pete Carroll. The Pats did inquire to the Jets about permission to interview Belichick for their vacant spot prior to Parcell stepping down. Parcells and the Jets said that Belichick was still under contract to the Jets and wanted compensation. Commissioner Tango Boo agreed, and the Pats gave the Jets a first round pick in 2000. And weirdly enough, owner Robert Kraft gave Bar Belichick full powers with the Patriots, making him the head coach and general manager and all of that. Belichick's first year was dismal, 5-11. and 11. However, in 2001, in what was a miracle season of sorts, the Pats were in trouble. They lost their star quarterback, Drew Bledsoe, due to a late hit by Mo Lewis in Week 2. Well, it would have been Week 3, but, you know, 9-11 happened. Bledsoe got hurt. Tom Brady came in as a sixth-round skinny kid from Michigan, and what did he do? He led the Pats to an 11-5 mark and to the Super Bowl. Shocking a lot of people, including myself. I won't lie, I actually was hoping Oakland would beat New England in that in the famous Tuck Rule game. Because I I didn't think the Pats were that good. I thought they were nobodies. Little did I know that A, I was wrong, and B, I would be cheering for the Pats a couple years later. Regardless, the Pats shocked the Rams. Belichick's Defense. Belichick, I think, was defensive coordinator, wasn't he? Belichick's defense held St. Louis to only 17 points. Well, the Rams had to rally from the 17-3 deficit. But the Pats in the final minute, despite John Madden saying that they're probably going to hold the ball for overtime, kicked the winning field goal to win the game 2017.
Unfortunately, the Pats would miss the playoffs at 9-7. and seven. They did actually tie with the Jets and Dolphins for the tops in the division, but there was a tiebreaker record of uncommon opponents that the Pats did not do well in, and so the Jets won the AFC East. The Patriots were terrible. They lost 31 nothing to the Buffalo Bills. They released their team defense captain, Lauren Malloy. But the funny thing is, after that, the Pats went 14-1. and Can you believe it? You lose 31 nothing, and then you run the table, almost run the table the rest of the way. So 14-2, and they crushed the Bills 31 nothing. ironically enough, the final week. Then they took care of Tennessee, Indianapolis, and Carolina to win the Super Bowl. Benetari had to kick a late field goal, although it was aided by the fact that John Casey, when he kicked off to the Pats, put it out of bounds, which automatically means that the ball is at the 40-yard line. The Pats again, 2004, 14 wins. So they got 21 consecutive victories through two seasons, though. They broke the record for most wins in a row, held by the Dolphins. Then they went to the Super Bowl, they beat the Phillies, I mean the Phillies, the Philadelphia Eagles to win the third Super Bowl in four years. So the Pats had a new defensive coordinator, Eric Mangini, but no offensive coordinator, which was weird. The Pats went 10-6 in 2005, got shocked by the Broncos. The Patriots would win 12 wins. In, 12 in, 12 in the 2006 season and got shocked by Indianapolis after blowing a 21-3 lead in the conference championship game. It's still the highest conference championship game comeback ever. And a lot of people say, what about Seattle and Green Bay? I think Green Bay's mark was less against Seattle. Anyhow, but the 2007 season, Belichick led the Pats to the Super Bowl and with a perfect season. Every regular season win and every playoff win up to that point. Unfortunately, though, the Giants did the same time management, clock management bullcrap in this game than they did in Super Bowl 25, and the Pats lost. I was pissed off. Hmm. Only two other teams had a perfect season other than the Dolphins. The 1948 Browns and the AFC. Did I say AAFC? And the 1948 Calgary Stampeders. I did not know that. Anyway, the Patriots, well, Belichick would have to lead the Patriots to a better mark without Tom Brady the next season. Why? Because Brady got hurt the first week of the season, and I was pissed. Somehow, in some way, the New England Patriots ended up 11-5 and, and could have won the division on the final day if frickin' Brett Favre could have taken down the Miami Dolphins and not have Chad Pennington, the guy who got dumped for Brett Favre, Lead the Dolphins to the win, the division, and fucking the Pats over 11 wins, tying them with the 1985 Denver Broncos for the most wins by a team that did not make the playoffs. Now, the 1985 Denver Broncos would have made the playoffs under the current format. Well, the, yeah, the current format, or the 1990-2020 to 2020 method. Because Denver would have got the sixth seed. But remember, the playoffs at that time in the 80s, were only five teams each. The three division winners and the top two non-division winners would face off in a what in a wild card game. So that just looked bad. The Patriots missed on tiebreakers for the Dolphins, who won the division on the fourth tiebreaker, better conference record, and the Ravens, who actually had a better conference record. So the Pats could have got a wild card, but the Ravens beat them to it. But Brady came back, and all that. Unfortunately, Belichick would be hit hard in the pocketbook by Spygate to do with. A Patriots video assistant taping the Jets' defensive signals from the sideline, and no re recording devices were allowed, and all that. The Jets complained. The Belichick got a half a million dollar fine. The Pats got a quarter million dollars off, and the Patriots had to forfeit their first round pick. The weird thing is, Roger Goodell was a former employee of the Jets as commissioner. What an idiot! I kind of figured that it was kind of some, some kind of spite and all that. But, you know, it's not that hard. Anyway, uh, Belichick would get 14 wins in the 2010 season, but shockingly lost on home turf to the New York Jets in the divisional round. The Pages won 13 games the next season and got lucky when Billy Cundiff missed a routine field goal in the AFC title game that should have tied the game and sent it to overtime. 
The funny thing is that I actually said in in some comment thing, I said it was the ghost of Maya Kraft, you know, Robert Kraft's dead wife. So anyway, um, they did lose the Super Bowl to the Giants 21-17, so I guess it was kind of revenge for how the, the Pats got to the Super Bowl in the first place. In 2012, they won 12 games, but the Ravens crushed them in the AFC title game. And then the next season, they won 12 and lost the AFC title game to Denver. And in 2014, they got to the Super Bowl. They beat the Seahawks 28-24. It was a good game. Seattle deserved to win. And why the heck didn't Seattle give Marshawn Lynch the ball to run in for a touchdown? I mean, they had two chances to do so, to run the clock down. And they, they decided to pass in the Malcolm Butler's interception. I know I'm a Pats fan, and I shouldn't be talking positively about the Seahawks, but Seattle got robbed. I will admit that one. In the 2015 season, the Pats won 12 games, losing to Bron the Broncos in the AFC title game. And then, two and then the next year, 2016 season, 14 wins, number one seed. And they were about to get their butts handed to them 28 3 to, to the Falcons in the Super Bowl. I turned off the game at halftime. And then all of a sudden, you know, at that 10 o'clock, okay, the game's over, so I'm going to check the score. And it was tied, and they were going to overtime. I'm like, how the hell did that happen? I know, I know. I just, I gave up, in a sense. Funny thing is, Patriots won. Anyway, so I guess I learned a valuable lesson. <laughs> the 2017 season, the Pats won 13 games and got to the Super Bowl. Taking on the Philadelphia Eagles. Sadly, though, the Eagles would use the Philly Special to their advantage to win 41-33. The 2018 season, Belichick won 11 games. For the first time since 2009, in nine years, they didn't win 12, which is tick, which ticks me off and all that. But anyway, the Pats still won the AFC um, East and went and won the AFC title in overtime against the Kansas City Chiefs and won a lackluster Super Bowl 13 to three. But you know what? The sixth championship was huge. It tied George Hallis and Curly Lambeau for championships as the head coach. Remember, the NFL operated. Lots of championship stuff before the Super Bowl came in 1967. Belichick said he would be the defensive coordinator for the Pats in the 2019 season. He got his 300 point regular season, postseason combined, and the Titans somehow, in some way, beat them in the wildcard playoffs. Belichick was still coach, even though Tom Brady was gone to Tampa and COVID 19 issues. They ended up being 7 and 9, and Belichick for the first time in almost two decades, had a losing season as a as the head coach. And then the Pats got lucky with Mac Jones with the 15th overall pick. And Mac Jones was made the starter, and Cam Newton was released. Anyway, the Pats did okay, but sadly, though, they got crushed in Buffalo in the first round. So anyway, he did pretty well. So his head coaching mark, 254 wins as a Patriots head coach, and 40, 36 with Cleveland. So 290 regular season wins, 31 postseason wins. So that's 321. Belichick is known for his coaching tree. Six head coaches. He worked under Ted Marchabroda, Rick Forsano, Tommy Hutzbeth, Red Miller, Ray Perkins, and Bill Parcells. But 19 of his, 19 of his assistant coaches have been NFL slash NCAA head coaches. Famous, well, I'm not going through all 19, but anyway, the famous one. Nick Saban was a, and was an assistant to Belichick, and he would coach Michigan State, LSU, the Miami Dolphins for a few years, and then he's the current coach for Alabama since 2007. Kirk Ferentz, the coach of Iowa, has been around since 1999. Al Groh, the infamous Al Groh for the Jets, who became head coach after Belichick left, and then went to Virginia for nine years. Romeo Cornell, Cleveland and Kansas City head coach. Charlie Weiss. When he went to Notre Dame in Kansas, University of Kansas, that's a death sentence. Eric Mangini, of course, Jets and Browns. Josh McDaniels, coach of the Broncos for two years and will be the head coach of the Bay because Raiders. Um, Bill O'Brien, Penn State in Houston before being fired. Matt Patricia, a few years in Detroit. Brian Flores, who lasted a few years in Miami. Joe Judge, a few years with the Giants. 
and some other people. Anyway, three of Belichick's former players were NFL slash NCAA head coaches. Cliff Kingsbury for Texas Tech and Arizona, well, where he is now. Mike Frabel for the Titans now. And Kevin O'Connell, who will be the Vikings head coach. So, yeah, the, the problem is that, you know, the coaching tree has problems in the NFL postseason and all that. In, you know, the NCAA, well, they were good and all that. Anyway, Donald Trump actually appointed Belichick to be a member of his council on sports fitness and nutrition and all that. Um, Belichick was married to a businesswoman from 1977 to 2006, having three children. But they separated and all that. Belichick was accused of having a relationship with a former Giants receptionist. I know. But since 2007, Belichick's in a relationship with Linda Holiday, who's the executive director of the Bill Belichick Foundation. So anyway, um, he has three children, and St Stephen is was an assistant coach with the Pats in 2012, promoted to safeties coach in 2016, and moved to outside linebackers coach in 2020. And Brian is safeties coach now. So Stevens is outside linebackers coach, and Brian is a safeties coach. Belichick was supposed to have the presidential medal of freedom, but basically he couldn't do it because of the storming of the Capitol. Um, if you play Madden like I do, His name is not actually used because he's not a member of the NFL Coaches Association, which licenses the game. So he hasn't joined the association. So that means that when you play Madden, his his name's not there unless you do it yourself. Uh, uh, Belichick was part of a football life in 2011. The documentary followed Belichick through the 2009 season and all that. He was actually referenced in Family in the Family Guy episode Three Acts of God, and it was revealed that God will let the Patriots win games because Belichick never smiles, which is funny. All that there was a thirty for thirty for EA span called the Two Bills about the history between Belichick and Parcells. I don't think Bill Lang has ever seen that one. I don't remember, but anyway, yeah, I should see that one. So anyway, oh man, I took a long time with this. But Bill Belichick is an icon, so it's worth the wait. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.